Watch for the Signs. My name is Jared. In this video, we're going to be talking about a few fish kills and also some die-offs, um, a couple that recently occurred, and then <clears throat> some other ones that showed up in a search that I was doing. I want to start off with this one down here. Now, this is back in 2015, summer of 2015. Um, you know from my other tabs, if you've been watching the channel, whenever I highlight something in red like this, it means that it's the largest ever in that area. So in this case, there were 40 million mangroves that died. Mangroves are a type of tree. This was in Australia. And uh, this wasn't just for Australia. This was, as far as the record, uh, this is a worldwide, it's a world record, 40 million mangroves. So this is a new entry. have a few others. In uh, the United Kingdom, in the northeast of England, uh, there have been tens of thousands of crabs, lobsters that have died. We're going to go into some of the details in just a little bit. Uh, found one, I found one in Minnesota, brown trout, over 2,500 uh, were killed. Okay. And then more recently, uh, now this one's kind of interesting. These are both in British Columbia in Canada. Uh, the most recent happening was salmon. It was tens of thousands. And then the second one that was just like like a week or two before, uh, white sturgeon. And uh, the reason why this made news is because white sturgeon are endangered. There were 11 that died. Um, it caught my eye that they're so close together and they're both in British Columbia. In British Columbia. Now, the first one where the tens of thousands died... Uh, they know why that happened. It was because uh, the creek bed dried up and uh, fish need water or else they die. So there's not really a mystery there. Um, in the case of the white sturgeon, they don't know. They don't know. Uh, so I don't know how likely it is uh, whether these two events are related or not. They could be. We know that when <clears throat> the water is warm, there's less oxygen in the water, but... I think usually they're they're able to tell that because in some of these cases they they're like oh yeah warm water uh, they died of lack of oxygen so and they've been watching the white sturgeon really closely but they don't have a a cause as of right now now when you look at the map okay uh, the tens of thousands of uh, what were they again I think I said they were yeah salmon that happened over here. Um, uh, I think it's on tribal land because it's uh, the uh, Hiltsuk Tribal Council. So it's like in this area. Anyway, this is where that happened. Okay. And it's interesting because um, it's not too far off when we're talking about latitude from the other incident, which was kind of in this area near Prince George in British Columbia on uh, this river right here, the uh, Nichaco river so i don't know uh I, I don't know you know make up your own mind but these two happened within just a little bit of each other and um geographically they're they're relatively close so i i don't know i just find it a little bit strange um i wish i knew <clears throat> if all these die-offs right here in september i, I wish i knew uh how usual or how unusual this is that there's so many in just one month on my tracker i have one two three four five six seven eight eight different fish kills um and it's uh let's see so you have everything from whales to largemouth bass crappy peanut bunker bluegills catfish red breed sunfish and it's in a variety of different locations um we got India, Australia, Indiana, South Carolina, Australia, again, uh, New Jersey, Georgia, and British Columbia. It's just kind of all over the place. And there were a bunch, or there was a handful in August that I'm aware of. And those were in California, the Germany-Poland border, which I need to update this because they... Uh, I, can't, I already forgot what it was, but I think they determined that the cause was algae. And then you have Georgia and California in um, August. So anyway, uh, you know, only it's just going to take time to fill up this this um, 
tracker and see if we can see any patterns or anything that's unusual. Um, you know, I'm putting the official quote unquote cause in the cause column right here. And then, uh, cause this spreadsheet is available to you. Uh, the link for it is in the description below. Uh, this is on my Google Drive, so you can access it. You just can't change anything on it. But I'm keeping track of all the sources where these... Oops, I forgot the N right there, the Guardian. Um, the source and then the name of the article in case you want to look it up yourself later. Or if you're keeping a tracker. So, um, yeah, this is what we have going on. So far, I have two record-breaking events. We have the mangroves, 40 million back in 2015. And then we have the pilot, the pilot whales in Australia, um, September of 2020. Okay, so let's take a look at just some of the details really quick for these stories, just to dive into it a little bit deeper. Okay, British Columbia's sunny dry weather is leading to major drought conditions in parts of the province, causing devastating impacts for some wildlife. Video posted on social media recently shows tens of thousands of dead salmon lying at the bottom of a dry creek in Bella Bella. Um... Let's see, William Housty, conservation manager with the Hiltzuk Nation, told CTV News Vancouver the site's quote-unquote unheard of. So, brand new for them. They've never seen this before. And then he says, uh, nobody that's living here in the community has ever seen anything like this before. Later, let's see, German researcher Sarah Mund says... We all knew that it's been a really dry end to the summer and beginning to the fall, but we really didn't anticipate that things were at the magnitude and the scale they're at right now. So, you guys, um, <laughs> the, the world is changing. You know, I'm not going to try and convince you or tell you why. Uh, I'm not interested in that, but it is changing. Um, and I think that, you know, there's there's different theories that are put out there but these are in my opinion signs of the times i'm i'm assuming that many of you are christians and you know that we're getting close to that time and i think that these are some of the signs that we need to watch for when you have fish dying and you have the environment and the earth changing so you know that, that this is an interesting statement that they weren't expecting anything at this magnitude. No one's seen this type of thing before in that area. Um, it says salmon experts say it's a growing problem that won't go away easily. Uh, this is Lena Aziz with Watershed Watch Salmon Society. She says, unfortunately, something I think we're going to see more often as global warming continues at the pace that it's at. All right, later, parts of the province have seen record-breaking high temperatures in recent days. All right, and then here's video. And it is just horrific. Yeah, there's there's not very much water. There's some water, but it's pretty well dried up. That is just, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And I'll bet that it smells lovely there too. Okay, now uh, this one. Let's see. No, this is the one that I want to go to. This is the other one in British Columbia. Sudden die-off of endangered sturgeon alarms Canadian biologists. In total, 11 endangered white sturgeon uh, have mysteriously died in a short period of time, blindsiding biologists who are trying to save a fish teetering toward extinction. And my question is, I, I don't know. I'm not an expert, but okay, so they're watching this fish. But whatever happened to this, to the sturgeon, I wonder if that happened to other species that are more common and just nobody noticed it. Um, I don't know. All right. Uh, so far, there are no obvious am answers. The team hasn't found any sign of trauma nor evidence of chemical exposure, disease, or angling-induced death. Quote, whatever it is, it affects larger sturgeon, not other species. Oh, okay. I guess they looked into it. Um, it's constrained to a place in time and space. So that gives us some clues, said Steve McAdam, a biologist with the province's Ministry of Land, Water, and Resource Stewardship. Quote, in a way, it's easier to rule a bunch of stuff out than to rule some things in. A battery of tests that followed uh, that die-off 
was inconclusive, said McAdam. The events occurred in different ecosystems, hundreds of kilometers apart, offering limited clues to investigators. Okay, this is talking about... Okay, I don't know why I highlighted that. A range of theories have been suggested, including a belief that elevated water temperatures are to blame. And, um, okay, so there you go. I mean, that would kind of make sense with what we saw uh, on the, you know, on the the west coast of British Columbia uh, with all the uh, salmon over here. But anyway, but McAdams said previous hot summers had not triggered s similar die-offs. Quote, there's no end to the ideas. There, there are some partial explanations, but we're really trying to keep an open mind and not veer too far down one path, he said. Um, the abruptness with which the fish have died has puzzled biologists and in part because white sturgeon have been closely studied and monitored for the last three decades, precisely because of their precarious situation. Quote, and then within a week, this happens. We have a new huge question mark, uh, said Gant Gantner. Uh, quote, it's really blindsided us. So just unexpected things happening. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go to Minnesota. Fish kill in Minnesota River tops 2,500. State confirms deaths did not occur, occur naturally. Now, uh, okay, Lewiston, Minnesota. Some cons conservation groups are sounding the alarm concerning some waterways in southeastern Minnesota after thousands of fish were recently found dead. And it's not the first time that's happened in that area, which is home to a lot of trout. Uh, Lazunski says property owners alerted him to about 75 dead fish on Tuesday. On Thursday, the, D the DNR confirmed it counted 2,500 fish, most of which are brown trout. Some of the fish are up to 27 inches long. Uh, in a statement, the DNR and the Pollution Control Agency say they're investigating and don't believe the fish kill happened naturally. Quote, the agencies have launched thorough investigations to look at all possible causes, including whether this was triggered by an extreme weather event. Field crews from the three agencies have collected fish and water samples and are analyzing results to help determine the cause of the fish kill. The fish kill was observed following heavy rainfall in the area on July 23rd. Uh, such rain events are known to result in contaminated runoff to streams and rivers. Okay, so, <clears throat> and then later, uh, we know from the previous ones it tends to be in conjunction with a rainfall event, but it's clearly something that gets into the water. Some pollutant, some pollutant is being carried in. Uh, the state does have pesticide and fertilizer laws, uh, saying it initiates hundreds of inspections every year. Permits and record keeping are also mandatory for people spreading manure. The state says in this case, it's looking into whether those regulations are being followed. So the jury was seated and opening statements were set uh, to begin today in the high profile whoa, civil whoa, case whoa, whoa. of a former University of Minnesota student accusing a Chinese. <laughs> nice. OK. Let's see. This one is also in Minnesota. This was earlier. It says, we know that the same geology of our area that gives us the beautiful bluffs in the Driftless region make our communities particularly at risk of groundwater contamination, the, later, the letter stated. The group said the summer's Upper Rush, Upper Rush Creek fish kill was one of several fish disasters that occurred in, in trout streams in recent years. In 2021, 250 trout were found dead at a popular fly fishing spot in Trout Valley Creek, according to the letter. The DNR investigated another fish kill in Garvin Brook in 2019, where an estimated 1,500 fish, including 1,300 brown trout, were killed. In 2015, thousands of dead fish were discovered in one of Minnesota's most productive trout streams, the South Fork of the White Water River. Okay, so, you know, they're saying it's not natural. Uh... But they they don't know what it is, which I I don't know I don't know the science behind it, but I would I would I would think that if it was like pollution or some chemical or something like that, shouldn't that shouldn't you be able to detect that in the fish somewhere like somewhere in its body on its body? Um, I don't know that just sounds kind of weird to me. Uh, here's the crabs and the lobsters in uh, the UK. 
Okay, so this has happened a couple times. They're wondering if uh, pyridine pollution could have done it, but they don't know. Uh, here's the mangrove thing. World's largest mangrove die-off was likely aided by the moon. Uh, and I'm not going to say that that's wrong, but anyway, in the summer of 2015, some 18,000 acres of lush mangrove forest uh, turned brown and perished in northern Australia's Gulf of Carpentaria. With 40 million dead trees, this event became the largest mangrove die-off in recorded history. Scientists thought they knew the reason. At that time, a massive El Nino event had led to a drop in sea level, uh, depriving mangrove roots, mangrove roots of water. But a new study published this month in Science Advances suggests another culprit, the moon. Researchers have known about a phenomenon called the moon wobble since 1728. Uh, the scientists examined satellite images from 18, 1987 to 2020 and realized that mangroves experience a growth and dieback cycle on the same time scale as the moon's wobble. Okay, so that, that's pretty good evidence, right? Uh, they traced how the tree cover expanded and contracted over time in correlation with this lunar effect. But uh, Norman Duke, an, an ecologist from James Cook University in Australia, who led <clears throat> a previous study linking mangrove die-offs to El Nino, says he's not convinced the moon wobbles the main reason for the mangrove, mangrove changes, uh, writes Janelle Wool of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Quote, undoubtedly tides are, are right there, but uh, they're not the only thing. My hunch is that it's El Nino with rainfall and tide influences after that. Okay, so whatever, 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 even if it's like common, uh, for some reason, <clears throat> the largest one of all time happened in 2015. <clears throat> Something that we should, I think that we should take note of, personally. So that's going to be it for this one. Um, you know, I, I just feel like everything's kind of broken, <laughs> frankly. I, I feel like everything is broken. I feel like these things are happening probably more than they should. Um, I know sometimes they say, oh, you know, sometimes it's like natural. It just it happens. And I don't doubt that. But, you know, when we look at the causes here, let me go over to the causes column. And uh, how about we go to 200? You know, there's just all sorts of things here. So <clears throat> heat right? That's supposedly that's a newer thing because of climate change and global warming, right? The next one, unknown. They didn't know anything about the sturgeon. Uh, this one, pollution. These next three, unknown. Uh, and then you got algae, red algae, um, right? And then unknown, pollution. There was a sewage flow and then unknown, pollution. This one was uh, a fire, uh, partially caused by a fire because it was making like a, a sludge, it says right here, a plume of brown sludge that made its way down river. And so that's what killed the fish. Um, you could argue that the McKinney fire uh, could be related to um, global warming. And uh, just, I, I don't know though. I, I'd have to look into that closer probably. Unknown, oxygen, oxygen. Let's see, shallow waters and rat out of oxygen. So anyway, there's just like all these different things, disease, oxygen. A lot of times in the case of oxygen, it has to do with uh, temperature, like the, the warming of the waters. Um, so I, I don't know. You, you tell me what you think is happening. You tell me if you think that all this is just normal. Do you think it's increasing? Um, do we not have enough data yet? Well, I, I know that we don't have enough data yet, but just let me know your thoughts below. If I were to venture a guess, I feel like I'm seeing this more in the news within the last few years than I have before. And I've always been somewhat of a news junkie, you know, <clears throat> ever since I was like, ever since I was like a preteen, I was interested in the news, uh, stra <laughs> strangely, um, I feel like this is increasing, but you let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, like this video if you liked it. Make sure to share it with anyone that likes tracking these type of things. 
and I'll talk to you guys later.